Okay, welcome again. I'm Robert Breaker, and this will be our Sunday sermon. And I've looked forward to this message. I've been planning something like this, similar, for some time. I wanted to preach a message on this. And uh, I've been praying, well, Lord, how do I do it? What do I say? I I've got an idea of the verses that I want to use, but what title should it be under? And I was praying, and usually, as the Lord does, sometimes while I'm sleeping, I, I wake up in the middle of the night and think about this, and or sometimes during the day if I'm driving somewhere, or a lot of times mowing the yard is the best time to think and just get together with the Lord in prayer and, and think about some things. And uh, the Lord told me to, to go ahead and teach this message. I believe it's a very, very important message for the church today, especially for those that claim to be ministers. I think many people have forgotten what the word minister means. So I want to preach on this subject today. Are you a good example. Are you, this is going to be a personal message to you today, are you a good example of a Christian? I thought about calling this, what are you an example of? But knowing the English language and having an aunt that was an English teacher for many years, she's always taught me never end a sentence with a preposition. <laughs> so I said, I can't do that. Uh, so I said, okay, are you a good example? So the message today is, are you a good example of a Christian? I ask you to turn with me to 1 Timothy chapter 4. 1 Timothy chapter 4, we're going to look at verse 10 through 12. And as, as I was reading through this passage, what it says there in verse 12 really stood out to me about how we're supposed to be an example today as a Christian. Now some might be saying, now Brother Breaker, why are you preaching this message? Well, I'll be honest with you. I am just very, very saddened by what passes itself off today as Christian. There are many out there who say they're Christians, but when you look at their lifestyle, you look at the way they talk, you look at the way they act, they're not showing Christ. They might say with their mouth that they're a Christian, but it's the action that we need to look at. How are their actions? What are they an example of? Are they an example of what the Bible says a Christian should be? Or are they an example of someone who is not following the Bible? There are many ministers out there that claim to be Bible believers. Very few are even Bible readers. And even fewer still are Bible followers. They claim to believe the book. They claim to even believe the King James Bible only. The King James Bible only. Yet in their actions, their mannerisms, they don't even follow what the Bible says. So it's one thing to say you're a Christian. It's another thing to show others that you are. And that's what I want to do today. I want to show you how a Christian is supposed to live and treat other people. Everyone is an example to someone else. And I want to be an example of a true Bible-believing Christian. So what I want to do today, I want to show you how a Christian should act and treat other people. So let's start here in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 10. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 10. Now, some might say, now why are you preaching this? Well, if you know my background, um, I was ordained in an independent Baptist church. I went to a Bible school that was connected with an independent Baptist uh, ministry. And I've been a missionary in Honduras for seven years, and I traveled around for, for three or four years preaching in different independent Baptist churches. And one of the things I found is, is uh, like one guy said, he said, the independent Baptists, why, well, they eat their own. <laughs> What did he mean by that? He meant there's a lot of people that are independent Baptists that are just mean as the devil. There's this critical spirit. Not all. Thank God I've met some examples of true Christians within this movement. But there's very few. And now there's a lot nowadays that are starting to leave the independent Baptist movement. And such people uh, are, are even worse. A lot of them are very critical spirit and mean and hateful and angry. Is that how a Christian should act? Is that edifying to anyone? Well, let's look at what the Bible says. And if you are truly a Bible believer, it is my hope that this message will help you to think about your example toward others and how you should treat them and how you should act toward them. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 10 through 12. For therefore we both labor and suffer reproach, because we trust in the living God who is the Savior of all men, especially of those that believe. You see, salvation is by faith. Faith alone. Believing. When you believe, when you trust 
in the blood of Christ, you're saved. I, I always like to draw it up here, and I might as well this, this time. Uh, a lot of people get a little sad if I don't draw up here the timeline. This is the timeline that, that shows the Bible. In Spanish, it's perfil, which is uh, outline. This is an outline of, of the things to come and the things that have happened from Jesus. And the Bible says to be saved, you must trust. And I'll talk a little bit about that later. Boy, that one, that one's out. That marker went out. So you have to trust. And thank God for the blood of Jesus Christ. It's all about that shed blood that he shed on the cross. That's what our trust should be in, trusting in Christ, who did suffer reproach. You know, Jesus, when he was uh, uh, suffering and he was beaten and he was mocked and he was led from kangaroo court to kangaroo court, notice that he didn't lash out in anger and mean-spiritedness. He kept silence. He suffered reproach. And maybe that's an example to us. Have you ever thought about that? <laughs> Well, let's get started here. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 10 says, Trust in the living God who is the Savior of all men, especially of those that believe. Verse 11, These things command and teach. So we're supposed to teach that salvation is by faith, by trusting in the Savior and what He's done for us. Verse 12, Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. So here's my text. I'm going to take and preach from this text today, verse 12. And it tells us that we should be an example of some things. We should be an example of. And this is what the Bible says. There are six things mentioned here. We should be an example of word. All right, what does that mean? What I'm going to do is I'm going to go through each one of these six different things. Uh, things, and we're going to look at them, because I, I had a Bible study here at house and was studying this, and the Lord just, it just amazed me when I went through and looked up each one of these, how it all pointed to being a good example. So in word, in conversation, in charity, well that's something that a lot of people don't have today. In spirit, the Bible says, in faith and in purity. These were the six things, one, two, three, four, five, six, that are found in that verse. Let me just go ahead and read that verse again. Here's our apostle, the apostle Paul, and he tells us, Be thou an example, be an example, and look what he says there, of the believers. He doesn't say be an example to believers, be an example of believers. What does that mean? That means you are a believer, and you are an example of how you believe. So do you believe that this is how you're to be example of or no? And be an example of this. How? How are you an example of these things? Because you are one of these. So you're supposed to be like this. Now look what he says here. Let no man despise thy youth, verse 12, verse 12, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, and in purity. Now verse 13, till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. So we're supposed to read, we're supposed to exhort others. Exhort means edify, build up, you know, tell them the truth in the hopes that they'll do right. And that's what I'm trying to do today is to exhort you to be a good example as a Christian. And doctrine. What I want to do today is I want to show you what the doctrine is of how a Christian should live. And how a Christian's example should be. So what I did is I looked at each one of these. I took these six things that Paul said we are to be an example of, and I went and I looked up these words in the Bible. And I found each one of these showed us a certain way that we're to live. And it was amazing. And it was just like Paul is talking to the church today. Because it appears to me that many people in the church, many that claim to be saved, have forgotten these things and how important it is to follow these. So the first one is Word. Let's go to the Word. Let's go to Titus 1.9. Titus 1.9. We're supposed to be an example of the Word, okay? So let's go to Titus chapter 1 and verse 9, and here we read about the Word. Titus chapter 1 and verse 9. Holding fast the faithful Word as thou hast been taught, that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. So this is the Word of God. We're supposed to hold faithful the Word of God and the doctrine in the Word of God, not depart from it. 
Are you holding true to the true doctrine? Now, I'm going to read one verse for each one of these, but then I'm going to go ahead and read the context. So we're going to go to the context here, and we're going to read verse 7 to verse 14. And what I found is in each one of these that I looked up, when I read the context, it was amazing to me. The context is how God wants us as Christians to live. How we're to act. How we're supposed to treat others as Christians. How we as Christians are supposed to be an example to others. So Titus chapter 1, look at verse 7 through 14 and look at what it says. And contrast this with today. Many people say, Brother Breaker, today uh, uh, there's people on YouTube that preach and, and there's people in churches that preach and, and there's people on blogs and there's people on the internet that are in these little chat rooms and, 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 and they claim to be Christians but all they do is attack one another and, 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 and even cuss and name call and do the... And, and they say, is that, is that Christian? I said, well, you tell me. I'm going to show you what the Bible says, how a Christian is supposed to be. And let's see if that's a good example to be like that, or if we're supposed to be like the Bible says. It says here in Titus 1, verse 7 through 14, For a bishop must be blameless as the steward of God, not self-willed, not soon angry, not given to wine, no striker, not given to filthy lucre. Now, bishop is, of course, a pastor. And he's not supposed to get angry quickly. He's not supposed to be drunk or a, a, a brawler, someone that beats people up, not, give, not loving money. And it says here in verse 8, But a lover of hospitality, a lover of good men, sober, just, holy, temperate. All right, so are you a lover of hospitality? Hospitality means you go out of your way to be hospitable to someone. It's more than just in, inviting someone into your home even though that's part of what hospitality means, it means you be hospitable. You be nice to people. You treat them decently and with respect. That's a hospitable person. You know, I'm from the South. We know a little bit about Southern hospitality down here. <laughs> but anyway, it says here, verse 9, Holding fast the faithful word as thou hast been taught, that thou may be able by sound doctrine both to con exhort and to convince the gainsayers. So by sound doctrine. See, that sound doctrine is more than just what you believe. Sound doctrine is how you live as a Christian. And you're supposed to live in this way, as a holy, temperate lover of good men, as a person who's not soon angry and doesn't do these things. Sound doctrine is not just the doctrine of what we believe. Sound doctrine also has to do with how you act, how you're an example to others. Why? Why is God interested in how we act? Verse 10, for there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision. Verse 11, whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not, for filthy lucre's sake. There are people out there that preach lies only to get money. And it's very, very, it's very, very clear that all they want is money. And it says here in verse 12, one of themselves, even a prophet of their own, said the Christians are always liars. You can tell these people by their, their lying all the time. Evil beasts, slow bellies. Verse 13, this witness is true, wherefore rebuke them sharply that they may be sound in the faith. You see, it's not the fact that they're wrong in their doctrine, it's wrong in how they're living their lives. They're a poor example of what a Christian is supposed to be. And it says here, verse 14, not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men that turn from the truth. So we don't need to follow men and their commandments and what they say. We follow the scriptures and what the scriptures say. So this is what it's talked about in word. In word. We're supposed to follow the word of God. And to be a good example, we follow what the Bible says. Well, I'm going to show you some things that the Bible says about how we as Christians should live. The next thing here is... I believe it's 315, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. And then the context is 8 through 16. It's amazing to me how every one of these, when I look them up, it's an example of not just believing right, it's an example of this is how a Christian is supposed to act and treat other Christians. And I'm trying to make this personal and ask you, are you a good example? Are you, as Paul said, a good example of these things? Let's go to 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. We're talking about conversation. The Apostle Paul tells us that we are to be an example in our conversation. Now, a lot of people, they think conversation means just what you say with your mouth, but in the Bible, oftentimes, conversation is not just what you say, but also how you act. Your conversation is how you carry yourself. 
Are you this type of person? Are, they, are you a caring, loving person that cares about instructing and, and edifying others? Or is your conversation, you're the type of person that just can't wait to jump on somebody and attack them because you think you're right and everyone else is wrong? So the example of a true Christian is this. All right, so let's go to 1 Peter 3.15. 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 15 says, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with fear, with meekness and fear. And then verse 16, I forgot to put there verse 16, but look what it says there. Having a good conscience that whereas they speak evil of you as of evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse you of your good conversation in Christ. So we'll put up here 15 and 16. Here's the apostle, Here's the apostle Peter. And the Apostle Peter is telling us, you ought to know how to answer people. And you're supposed to answer them with meekness and fear. Fear of what? Fear of saying the wrong thing. Fear of being a bad example. And then he says here, in verse 16, you have a good conscience. Whereas they speak evil of you, as of evil doers, they may be ashamed. If someone says something about you that's not true, they ought to be ashamed of themselves that accuse your good conversation in Christ. Your conversation ought to be, hey, I'm doing right, I'm living right. And then when someone says something about you that's not true, anybody that hears that says, no, you're a liar. That guy, I watch him, I hear him, I listen to him, I see him as a good example. I know his lifestyle, I know his teaching, I know how he carries himself. And you are not right when you say evil things against him. So how about it? Do you have a good conscience? Do you have a good conversation? Do you have a, a lifestyle that is in agreement with the Word of God? Let's look at the context here of 1 Peter chapter 3, and let's start in verse 8. This is how a Christian is supposed to live. And he tells us here, this is how a Christian is not supposed to act. So look at what we're supposed to do, and look at what we're not supposed to do. 1 Peter 3, 8, Finally be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another, love as brethren, be pitiful, be courteous. <laughs> Are you a courteous person full of pity and love of the brethren? Do you have the same mind as others? It says here in verse 9, Not rendering evil for evil, or railing for railing, but contrarywise blessing, knowing that you are called that, thereunto called that you should enter, uh, that you should inherit a blessing. Well, what do you do? What is your ministry? Is it just railing on people and, and being mean toward them? Well, that's not what you're supposed to do. If you claim to be a Bible believer, you're not following the Bible. If that's what you do all the time, is just attack other Christians. Verse 10, For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no guile. Wow, this almost sounds like a promise from the Bible that if, if you're evil and you're just talking bad about people all the time, that you just might not live a long life. What a scary thought. Restrain your tongue and your lips that they speak no evil or guile. So don't say anything bad about other Christians or other people. Verse 11, let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. Why, an example of a true Christian is someone that seeks peace and wants peace with others. But that's hard to find nowadays. Many people claim to be Christians and all they do is attack one another. Where's the peace? Where's the peace? Verse 12, For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers, but the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. 13, And who is he that will harm you if you be followers of that which is good? Amen? If you're doing right, and you're living right, and you're doing good, and you're a good example of a true Christian, what's the worst someone can do to you? Nothing. Slander you, say things about you that aren't true, so what? Other people who know you know that's a lie straight out of the pits of hell. So they're not going to swallow it. Verse 14, But, and if you suffer for righteousness' sake, happy are ye, and be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled. If they try to harass you, or terrorize you, or put you down, don't be afraid of them. They're a poor example of a Christian. Because that's not the way a Christian should treat others. Let me just skip over verse 15 and 16, because we've already read those. And verse 17, for it is better, if the will of God be so, that you suffer for well-doing than for evil-doing. And so, uh, 15. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear, having a good conscience that whereas they speak evil of you as of evildoers, 
they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation as Christ. So what is Peter telling us? Do good, live right, don't rail on people and put others down and attack and ridicule and mock and, and just be evil toward them. Do good. Have some hospitality, have some love for other people and treat them right. Otherwise, God's face is against you. God doesn't like it when people are a poor example of a Christian. Now, let's go to the next one. Charity. Charity. Isn't it interesting that in each one of these, there's a rebuke, it sounds like. God is saying, now this is how you don't live. This is an example of how you should live. Now, let's go to Colossians chapter 3 and verse 14. Colossians 3, 14. And then we're going to look at the context of Colossians, verses 12 through 17. And I find... In all these places, an example of how we should live, how we should act, what our example should be to others, and an example of what we should not be. And what's sad to me is that the majority of Christians today are those that are doing the things they shouldn't be, instead of truly following the scriptures and being what they should be. What should we be? Colossians chapter 3 and verse 14, we're talking about charity. Now this is Paul. I'm going to show you Paul, and then I'm going to show you Peter. So this one's Paul, this one will be Peter, and it's going to be in, in uh, Peter, oh, we'll look at that here in a second, in uh, 1 Peter 4.8. And then we'll look at the context of that, which is verses 1 through 15. Both Paul and Peter said something that was quite interesting. Both Peter and Paul said, above all things... The most important thing to have as a Christian is charity. Let's look at that. Colossians chapter 3, verse 14. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. The bond of perfectness. If you have charity, then you have the bond of perfectness. The things that makes a Christian and his conversation and his example good and makes him perfect in God's eyes, we're perfect, our, our soul is forgiven, so we're perfect in God's eyes in the sense that we, we're not, not sinners, we're washed in the blood of Christ. But your Christian life, if you want your Christian life to be good, you need charity. If you don't have charity, you're in trouble. You're in trouble. What is the context, Paul? Well, let's go to verse 12 through 17 and see what he's talking about. What is the context of charity? Verse 12, put on therefore as the elect of God, look what he says here, Holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering. Do you have any of those? Do you have charity? Do you have mercy? Are you kind? Are you humble? Are you meek? Are you long-suffering? You know what long-suffering means? It means putting up with people. <laughs> That's one of the hardest things to do in this world is to put up with people. But if you want to be a true Bible believer and a good example, you're supposed to put up with people and have some long-suffering towards them. Look at verse 13. Forbearing one another and forgiving one another, if any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also you do. We're supposed to forgive others. Verse 14. Above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. Now look at verse 15. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also you are called in one body. And I love this verse. This is one of my favorite verses. And be ye thankful. I've met a lot of Christians that are so unthankful. They go around like, you remember that old cartoon, Droopy? Remember Droopy? I used to love to watch Droopy. He was a dog and he was a cartoon. And Droopy would go around and he'd say, I'm so happy. <laughs> His words didn't max, match his actions because he walked around mopey all the time. He was moping. He wasn't thankful. And there's a lot of Christians out there today, they're not thankful. They are not thankful for what they have. They say, oh God, I wish I had more. I wish I had more. I wish I had more. What does the Bible say? You're supposed to be content with what you have, with food and raiment. There would be content. Look at verse 15. And be ye thankful. Are you an example of thankfulness? Do people look at you and say, man, that brother's thankful? Or do they say, he's the most ungrateful, unthankful person? Verse 16, let the word of God dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And then verse 17, whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Do you teach others? 
do you edify and build up, or do you just focus your entire time on putting others down? You know, that's a horrible example. A horrible example. Let's look at what Peter says about charity in 1 Peter 4, 8. 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 8, look what it says here. And above all things, just like Paul said, above all things. So both Peter and Paul agree, charity is the most important thing above all things. Do you have it? I know some people that call themselves Christians that have no charity whatsoever. They're a poor example of what the Bible says you're supposed to be. Watch out for such people. It says in 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 8, And above all things have fervent charity among yourselves, for charity shall cover a multitude of sins. Now let's look at the context of 1 Peter chapter 4. Verse 1 through 4. We find some more. We glean some more of how a Christian should act and should think and should be as an example. 1 Peter chapter 4 Verse 1 says, For as much then as Christ also hath, uh, hath suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For the he that hath suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. That you no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of God. 3. For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles when we walked in lasciviousness, lust, excess of wine, revelings, banquetings, and abominable idolatries. This is how people lived before they were saved. They're not supposed to do that. Go partying and drinking and getting drunk and doing all these horrible things. And then he says here in verse 4, Wherein they think it's strange that you run not with them to the same access of riot, speaking evil of you. I, I, I just remember that so well. How even before I was saved, I didn't want to go partying. I didn't want to go dancing. I didn't like those things. And people that I had at the time that were my friends, well, come on, let's go to the dance, or come on, let's go, let's go to a party, let's go. And I'm like, eh, I'm not into that. Oh, come on, what's wrong with you? <laughs> uh, nothing. I'm just somebody that doesn't want to go do something stupid. People do dumb things at parties when they get drunk. <laughs> I didn't want to go to those kind of places. I still don't want to go to those places. Verse 5, who shall give account to him that is ready to judge the quick and the dead. Verse 6, for this cause was the gospel preached also to them that are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but living according to God in the Spirit. Verse 7, but the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. Yeah, we're really close. We're really close to the rapture. I think we're right here. Very close to the rapture. So the end is at hand for us Christians. What do we need to do? Well, verse 8, have charity. For the charity shall cover a multitude of sins. Now look at verse 9, all the way down there to verse 15. Use hospitality one to another without grudging. Whew. So we that are Christians, we're supposed to be hospitable. And we're never, ever, ever supposed to hold a grudge against another Christian. Do you have a grudge against someone? If so, you're in trouble. You're a poor example of what a Christian's supposed to be. Get rid of that grudge. Forgive them. Get over it. Love them. Verse 10, As every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as the ability which God giveth, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. If you're a minister, all right, a preacher, an evangelist, a, a, a teacher of the Bible, do you have hospitality? And are you preaching the Word of God in such a way that all the glory goes to Jesus? I've met people in my life that claim to be ministers. And you listen to them to preach. You listen to them teach. And it's a waste of time. Because it's all about me, 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 me. Look at me. I'm so great. And this is, look at what I did and I did. And all the glory is them glorying in their flesh and who they are and what they do. And you get done with that, you just hang your head and go, Sure wish he would have bragged on Jesus instead of bragging on himself the whole time. It's really sad. Well, verse 12, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings that when his glory shall be revealed you may be glad also with exceeding joy. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye. For the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. On their part he is evil spoken of, but on your part he is glorified. Amen. Verse 15, but let none of you suffer as a murderer or as a thief. All right? You would say a murderer is evil, right? 
Murderer is evil, he ought to go to jail. A thief, oh, a thief is wicked, man. A thief ought to go to jail. Or as an evildoer. Yeah, if a guy does evil, he ought to go to jail. But look at what the next verse says, or in the next part of the verse says. Or as a busybody in other men's matters. <laughs> Isn't it interesting? You know what I've seen in Christianity? Busybodies. People, I don't know where they find the time, but they sure find it. They take time to attack you. They go out of their way. YouTube is the worst. You go to YouTube, there's people that claim to be Christians. And they devote their channel. I guess they're channeling something, I don't know. But they devote their channel to ridiculing, putting down, attacking other people that claim to be Christians. Mocking, making fun, name-calling, lying about them. And the Bible says they're just as horrible as a murderer. Because they're trying to murder that man's character. I've had that happen to me. I've had people go on YouTube and lie about Robert Breaker. Slander, libel, things that are not true, and they say it over and over. And you know what I say? Well, God bless them. But the Bible says we're not to be a busybody in other men's matters. Verse 15. That's not a good example. That's not what we're supposed to do. Verse 16. Yet if any man suffers a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. So I glorified God. I glorify God. Well, I was going to read verse 17, but you can read that yourself. Let's go now to the next one. Let's go to the next one. Let's go here to spirit. In spirit. We're supposed to be an example in spirit. Well, I was looking that up in spirit, and I went to Romans 12 and verse 11, and I said, wow. Romans 12, 11 tells us about in the spirit. And then I said, oh, the context. Let's look at the context. Now, this is a little long, verse 1 all the way around to 21. But this is a great chapter to tell us about how we that are Christians are supposed to act and treat other Christians and live in order to be an example. So Paul tells us, he says, be an example in spirit. All right, what does Romans 12, 11 say? Why, well, Romans 12, 11 says, not slothful in business, but fervent in spirit. I looked up the word fervent, and fervent means like boiling over. It means being earnest, being earnest in spirit. So what is Paul saying? He's saying be spiritual, not carnal. We're supposed to live spiritually. That means we walk in the spirit, that we fulfill not the lust of this flesh. But I look at modern Christianity today, especially those that claim to be Bible believers, and it's like they're walking in the flesh. Because the flesh, you see, I, I, I might get to it, I might not, it depends on time, what the Bible says are the works of the flesh, and what the Bible says are the works of the Spirit. And boy, it's very, very clear that many people today that claim to be ministers, they're in the flesh, not in the Spirit. So he says here in verse 11, Fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. So we serve the Lord. Not slothful in business. What is the business? Well, the Lord's business is ministering to people. Do you know what it means to minister? To minister means you take care of other people, you love other people, you do your best to help them. It, to minister is to build up. To minister is to, to care for. Uh, I've met Christians that say, I don't care for anybody. Just me. Okay? Then you're not a minister. And you're a poor example of what a Bible says. The Bible, what the Bible says a Christian should be. Let's read the context of chapter 12 of Romans because it's a great place to look at and see how a Christian is supposed to be. What's the example of how we as Christians are supposed to be? Romans 12:1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Verse 3, For I say, through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. You don't ever get to the point in your Christian life where you think, man, I'm so much better than these people over here. That's pride. That's sin. And God says, that's a poor example. That's a poor example. Look what it says in verse 4. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office. 
So we being many are one body in Christ, and every one members one of another. Six, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, for a, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith, of, or ministry, let us wait on, on our ministry, or he that teacheth on teaching. Eight, or he that exhorteth on exhortation, he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence, he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. Got any mercy? Are you a cheerful person? Do people like to hear you and be around you? Or do people say, man, whenever I listen to that guy, man, it just, it just makes me feel like he's got a critical spirit and I can't stand to listen to it. Look what it says here in verse 9. Let love be without dissimulation. Dissimulation means fakery. Abhor that which is evil, cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love, in honor preferring one another. Do you prefer Christians above yourself? Or do you say, I'm so much better than these people down here? You see, the example of a true Christian is someone that says, Look, I, I honor you and prefer you among myself because you're a brother in Christ. That's the right example. And even more, we read verse 11. Let's go to verse 12. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer, distributing to the necessity of saints, given to what? Again, hospitality. Be a hospitable person. 14. Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. Yet you see Christians that claim to be Christians, and they're cursing other Christians and say, I pray God curse that man. And you go, whoa, whoa. You're not a Bible believer. You're not an example to me of what the Bible says a Christian's supposed to be. What are you doing cursing people when the Bible says bless them and curse not? Verse 15, rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. Have you ever cried with another brother or sister in Christ? 16, be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. 17, recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as life in you, live peaceably with all men. You're supposed to have peace not declare war on other men of God. 19. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Someone's evil and wicked toward you? You show a good example of what a Christian's supposed to be. You say, hey, I bless you, and I love you. God bless you. You're doing something to me that's not right? But I'm not going to attack. I'm not going to lash out at you. I pray for you, and you're in God's hands. It's up to the Lord. Have a nice day. Verse 21, be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. So, I think that's interesting that that's the context of Romans chapter 12. And again, it's how a Christian should be. It's the example of a true Christian. Someone that blesses and doesn't curse. Someone that, that prefers others above himself, instead of thinking he's so much higher than everyone else. Someone who lives peaceably. Someone who loves others and has hospitality. Now let's look at the next one. Faith. Faith. Let's go to 2 Timothy 1.13. And then we'll look at the context of 2 Timothy, verses 7 through 14. I'm just looking at this passage of Scripture, and, and it made me look at these other verses, and all these other verses in the context showed me the example of a true Christian. And I'm trying to give you that example. Seven, 2 Timothy chapter 1. And I want to make it personal. I want to ask you. Look at yourself and ask yourself this question. Am I a good example of a Christian? Am I? The answer might surprise you. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 13. Hold fast the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and in love which is in Christ Jesus. Now, he says over there where we, we started, which was 1 Timothy 4, 12. Let me write that up here. 1 Timothy 4, 12. That was our starting verse. That's where all these uh, words come from. He says here, in faith. Be an example in faith. And we go to 2 Timothy 1, 13, and he says, Hold fast the form of sound words in faith and love. Isn't it interesting how faith and love are supposed to go together? When your faith is in Christ, you ought to love other men whose faith is in Christ. 
and other women. And you should have a camaraderie there. There should be fellowship there because you both have something in common. You're both saved and you love one another. Yet we find people that claim to be Christians today, there's no love. Jesus said in the last days, the love of many shall wax cold. And rather than loving one another, why they fight one another. That's a poor example of what a Christian is supposed to be. And so we're supposed to love one another. Now, let's read the context. Verse 7 through 14. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. When you're saved, you're supposed to have love. So where's that love? Verse 8. Be thou... Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner. But be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. Isn't it interesting? When you're preaching the gospel, you will be afflicted by people that don't love the gospel, that hate the gospel. Well, if someone says, oh, you're not a gospel preacher, and you're evil, and you're... you got to look at that and go, wow, wow. And you look at yourself and you go, well, I'm preaching 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, and that's the gospel. So, hey, I'm suffering affliction for preaching the gospel. Thank you, Jesus. I'm a good example of a Christian. Because that's what the Bible says you're supposed to do. And then in verse 9, who has saved us and called us with an holy calling, not according to our works. Aren't you glad that you're not saved by your works? You're saved by faith alone. But according to his own purpose and grace. We're saved by grace through faith in the finished works of Christ, the blood atonement of Christ, the gospel. And again, the gospel is 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. You know how you can judge somebody if they're a good Christian or not? If they're a good example? Whether or not they're preaching that. That's what they should be teaching. It says here as we continue in this passage... Verse 9, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Now, I'm going to read down there verse 14. So verse 10 says, But it's now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who has abolished death and have brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. 11, whereunto I am appointed pre a preacher and an apostle and a teacher of the Gentiles. What do you think he was preaching and teaching? These things that we're reading today. This is how you get saved. This is how you live after you're saved. That was Paul's ministry. And that's what a man who claims to be a minister today should be preaching. Are they? Are they even practicing what the Bible says? Verse 12, For the which cause I also suffer these things, nevertheless I am not ashamed. For I know whom I have believed, and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Thirteen, Hold fast the form of sound words, which thou hast heard of me in faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. The good thing which was committed unto thee keep by the Holy Ghost which dwelleth in us. So don't be ashamed. If people attack you, people lie about you, people say things that aren't true, they're a poor example of a Christian if they claim to be one. Don't worry about it. Don't be ashamed. People write me all the time and say, Well, Brother Breaker, all these people lie about you and say things that aren't true. Doesn't it bother you? I say, Nope. Nope. It doesn't bother me. I sleep well. I sleep well. Because I know what they're saying is not true. Now, if it's true, man, I want to get right with God. I want to get right with God. But if I'm not wrong, and people are doing what they do, which is usually with anger and hatred and meanness and envy and pride attacking me, then I look at them and say, well, I just bless them. Bless them, Lord. Bless them real good. That's heaping coals of fire on their head because they are not Bible believers. Because they're not practicing what the Bible says of how we should be a good example of Jesus Christ. Next one is purity. What does the Bible say about purity? Well, go to Titus 1.15. Titus chapter 1 and verse 15. Titus 1.15 says, Unto the pure all things are pure, but to them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure, but even their mind and conscience is defiled. There's people out there that claim to be Christians, but they don't live a pure life. And they do things that are horrible. What do they do? Let's look at the context. Verse 16. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny Him, being abominable and disobedient, and into every good work reprobate. They profess to know God, but in works they deny Him. What are the works that we're supposed to have as a Christian? Well, we're supposed to be loving. We're supposed to be gentle. Well, we're supposed to have hospitality. We're supposed to speak evil of no man. I mean, I've gone through, I've shown you 
the things that God said are what makes us a good example. And yet, you look at Christianity today, there's no love. They're angry, they're mean-spirited, they're hateful towards one another, they lie about one another. We're supposed to not lie, that's another one. We're supposed to not speak. It's like, it's like they haven't even read the Bible. They don't even know what the Bible says that a Christian is supposed to be. They're doing the exact opposite. In works, they deny Him. What are your works? What is your example? What if I went to your husband or your wife or, or your aunt or your uncle or someone that knew you and say, Hey, what do you think about this person? How would they describe you? It's a good question. Would they say, Oh man, that's a perfect example of a true Christian while they're just full of meekness and love and long-suffering and man, they're just so great. <laughs> Supposed to have long-suffering. Or would they say, Well, he's a hypocrite. He says one thing but he doesn't live the way he claims to be. Or he says one thing and does another. Whew. Do you show yourself as a Christian should? How should a Christian act? Let's go to Ephesians chapter 4. I'm trying so hard to show you why I am what I am. A lot of people, they write to me and say, Brother Breaker, all these people, they attack you, they lie about you, they say things that aren't true. And they say, you ought to defend yourself. You ought to make videos exposing them. You ought to tell the truth about those people. I say, I can't do it. Because that's not what the Bible says I'm supposed to be. I want to be what the Bible tells me to be. I want to be a good example of a true Christian who is truly following the Word of God. Now here's what the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 4. How a Christian should act. This is what makes us a good example as a Christian. Rather than a poor example of a Christian. These are Paul's words. Paul the Apostle to the Gentiles. Our Apostle. Ephesians 4.17 This I say therefore and testify in the Lord that you walk, henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind. You know what vanity is? Why? Vain. Someone that's only thinking of themselves and not other people. We who are Christians, we are not to be vain. Remember that old song, You're So Vain, you probably think this song is about you? Well, it was. <laughs> but people are vain and they always think everything's about them. No, no. It should always be about Jesus and others first. That's a true minister. Then it says, verse 18, Have the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. Boy, that's a mouthful. There are people that are blind spiritually because they have a dirty heart and it makes them ignorant of who they really are. You see, if you're truly reading the light, the scriptures is light, then the light will shine in your heart and show you, uh-oh, uh-oh, I'm not a hospitable person, I'm not gentle, I don't love others, I, I, I've been lying about other people, I haven't been long-suffering, I'm wrong, I'm a poor example, Lord, I'm sorry. I want to get right. Maybe you need to do that today. Maybe you need to get down on your knees and pray and say, Lord, I'm, I'm not a good example of a Christian. I'm sorry I'm not following the Scriptures. I want to do better. All I'm trying to do today is show you the Scriptures of how you're supposed to be as a Christian so you can be a good example of Christ. Verse 19, Who being past feeling had given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanliness with greediness. You see, when you go down the wrong road and you turn against the Scriptures and the way you're supposed to be, you don't have any feeling. You don't care about other people. And you're given over to lasciviousness and greediness. Verse 20, But ye have not so learned Christ. 21, If so be that ye have heard Him and have been taught by Him as the truth is in Jesus. 22, That ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. You see, true holiness isn't, well, I don't smoke and I don't drink and I don't do this and I don't do that. I don't go to bar. True holiness is whether or not you are hospitable and you have the fruits of the Spirit. That's true holiness. See, a lot of people want to dwell on what they don't do outwardly. And they say, I don't do all this because that's something people can see. God looks inwardly and he says, yeah, you don't smoke or drink or chew or fornicate. But how about that pride? How about that inside your heart, that anger, that bitterness, that hatred? What about that? You see, it's the sins inside that are the worst, not just the sins outwardly. 
Well, if I don't stop, I might start preaching here in a minute. Let me continue. Verse 12. Whereas putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Don't lie. Don't lie. Verse 26. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath, neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give to them that needeth. 29. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it might minister grace unto the hearer. Edify is the job of a Christian. That means to build up. Sadly, there's so many today that claim to be ministers that in the flesh go out of their way to try to tear down other Christians. That is not your place, and that is not your job. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, I will repay. If a Christian is doing wrong and living wrong and preaching wrong, you give them up to the, to, to the Lord. Let Him discipline them. Your job is not tearing people down. That's not ministering. What you're supposed to do is minister grace. What's that mean? That means you preach salvation by grace through faith in the blood of Christ, and you have grace with others. You be long-suffering towards others. You put up with people you don't like. You let them be. And you do what God called you to do. Teach and preach the Word of God. Hello! Bum, bum, bum. Is this thing on? I'm just showing you what the Bible says. Verse 29, Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying. I see so many people today that claim to be Christians, and so much corrupt communication that proceeds out of their mouth. They say things that are just filthy and mean and hateful and angry and ungodly. And I think to myself, why? Why are they such a poor example of a Christian? It saddens me. Verse 30, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. The context of grieving the Holy Spirit is verse 29. Saying something mean and hateful and angry and corrupt out of your mouth about other Christians. And that grieves the Holy Spirit. Yet there are many Christians today that they think that that's their, their ministry. My ministry is to tell you how bad that guy is. <laughs> I don't know what Bible you use, but it's not the King James. I don't know what apostle you follow, but it's not the Apostle Paul. I don't know what God you have, but it's not the God of the Bible. You have a false idea of what ministering is. Edifying is lifting up, building up, not tearing down. Minister is to care for others, not hate others and attack them. Verse 31, Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Malice is hatred with vengeance. You want to revenge with vengeance, attack other people. You are not a Bible-believing Christian and you are a poor testimony and a poor example and you ought to shut your mouth! better you don't even tell people you're saved than you go around and say, I'm born again, I'm saved, I'm a Christian, and then you, you just, oh, you're horrible. I've seen so many people in my life that were that close to getting saved. And then a person came along and said they were a Christian. And they, they were just hateful and mean and angry and lied and said horrible things about people. And then that person who was lost said, well, if that's the way a Christian acts, I don't want to be that. And they're damned to hell to this day. Because another person who thought they were a Christian was not a good example of what the Bible says a Christian is supposed to be. Can you imagine? You're saved and you get to heaven. And instead of God saying, well done, thou good and faithful servant, God says, man, you made it here by the skin of your teeth. And look at all the people you left behind you going to hell. Because you did not follow what the Bible says about how a Christian is supposed to act and treat other people. Instead, you are full of malice, bitterness, anger, hatred, clamor, and evil speaking. Boy, I'd hate to be in your shoes. Verse 32, And be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. 
Well, that's how we're supposed to be. That's a good testimony and a good example of a Christian. One who is kind, one who is tender-hearted, one who forgives others. Is that you? Is that you? Second Peter chapter 1. I showed you what Paul said about how to have a good example as a Christian. Let me show you what Peter says. 2 Peter 1.13 2 Peter 1.13 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 13, look what it says. Actually, verse 1 through 13. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 1 through 13. Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have attained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and goodness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue whereby are given unto us great and precious promises, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. You see, Paul says you have corrupt things coming out of your mouth. Why? Because you're worldly. You're fleshly. You're not walking in the Spirit. You're in the flesh. And you've allowed your heart to be full of bitterness and anger and wrath and hate and malice. And it shows. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. I see your heart. Not me. Others too. Not just me. We see who you really are by what you say. Are you a good example? <laughs> Verse 5, And besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. You got any patience? You got any temperance? You got any kindness toward the brethren, do you? Have you? Have any charity? Verse 8, For if these things be in you and abound, do they abound in you, do they? They make you that ye neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 9, But he that lacketh these things, and I've met a lot of people who claim to be Christians that lack these things. They're a poor example of a Christian is blind, and cannot see afar off, and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure, for if you do these things, you shall never fall. You're going to fall if you forget what it says here. Virtue, knowledge, temperance, patience, godliness, brotherly kindness, and charity. Any one of those, you forget. You start taking them away. Then you're going to fall. Headlong into apostasy. Headlong into backsliding. Headlong into a departing from a good example of what a Christian should be into an example of what a Christian should not be. Verse 11, For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly in the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Wherefore I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though you know them, and be established in the present truth. Verse 13, Yeah, I think it meet as long as I am in this tabernacle to stir you up by rem putting you in remembrance. I want you to remember what a Christian should be. You need to know what a Christian should be like. I don't care if I go long today. I've got more to say. Let's go to Galatians. I am very sad to see people, and I love these people because they claim to be Christians. They claim to be uh, Bible believers, and I love them. And I'm not saying they're saved or they're lost. It's not my ministry to go around and say, this guy's lost, this guy's saved. I don't know. My ministry is to try to help people. And with grace say, hey brother, this is what the Bible says. Are you following it? And I look at them and I see they're not. So I'm trying to put them, as Peter says, in remembrance. Go to Galatians chapter 5. And Galatians chapter 5 verse 13 tells us, for brethren, you have been called unto liberty, only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. You see, true ministering is serving other Christians. Not attacking them, putting them down, and treating them like garbage with the corrupt communications that proceed out of your mouth in which you lie and say things about them that aren't true. Look at verse... 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft. 
And people say, well, see, I don't have any of those, so I'm not in the flesh. Yeah, I only read the first part. <laughs> Look at the rest of it. Variance. You claim to be a Christian, but you devote your entire ministry to variance. What does that mean? That means making Christians uh, division in, into setting people apart into one side or another, so they'll fight. That's not a work of the Spirit. That's the flesh. Emulations. Well, that's not right. Wrath. Strife. Seditions. Heresies. Envyings. Isn't that funny how that's tucked in the middle of adultery and fornication, and then at the end, after heresies, it says murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like? See, there's a lot of people who say, well, I don't drink, and I don't adulterate, and I don't fornicate, and oh, I don't go and get drunk and, and go to parties. And they pride themselves and say, look how great a Christian I am. And I go, hey, hold on there, buddy. Yet you're full of variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions. And you're mean as the devil. That's not right. That's not right. How should a Christian act and what should be the Christian's testimony? What makes a Christian a good example? Verse 22, the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace. Long-suffering. Gentleness. Goodness. Faith. Meekness. Temperance. That's what makes a Christian a good example. Do you have any of those? Or are you walking in the flesh? When you're in the flesh, you want to attack others. When you're in the Spirit, you want to help and serve and uplift other Christians. I'm going to end this now with a word from Peter and a word from Paul. Let's go to 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 1-3. through 3. And then we'll go to Philippians chapter 3, verse 13-20. to 20. I'm preaching more today to ministers or to preachers or to Bible teachers because as I said at the beginning of this message, I've seen a lot of people that claim to be Bible believers and they're not acting the way the Bible says they should. And it's sad to me. Many of them are pastors or they claim to be. What does the Bible say? 1 Peter 5, 1 through 3, The elders which are among you I exhort, whom also an elder, and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the flock of God. You're supposed to feed them, not beat them. Feed them. How do you feed them? With the Word, by teaching them what the Scriptures say, what I've done today. I just showed you what the Bible says today. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly. Not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind. Three, neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being in samples to the flock. The word in sample is the old English word for example. An example is an example. A pastor is a bishop. And a bishop, someone who claims to be a pastor or a minister, is supposed to have these things. He's supposed to be an example or an example. Now let's go to Philippians. If you claim to be a preacher, I want to ask you to ask yourself, Am I an example of these things? When people look at me and my teaching and my preaching, do they see me as a true example of what a Christian should be? Philippians 3, verse 13 through 20. Brother, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto things which are before. I press toward the mark of I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. 15. Let us therefore as many as be perfect be thus minded. And if in anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. That is my prayer. That if you are not a good example, that God will reveal it to you. And that you will become what you're supposed to be. A true minister of truth that's walking in the spirit and not in the flesh. Verse 16, nevertheless, we're in two. We have already attained. Let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same thing. What's the rule? The Word of God. I've given you what the Word of God says. The rules for how to be a good Christian and have a good testimony and a good example. 17, brethren, be followers together of me and mark them which, so, which walk so as you have for us in example. Again, the word in sample. 
Paul says, you have us as an example. And if another man is walking the way he should, you mark them. You see, the Bible tells us we mark them that cause division. That is, we point them out and say, this person is not doing right. They're preaching wrong. But then we also mark them that are doing right. That's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to say, hey, this brother is a good brother because he's a good example. He's an example. Let's go all the way down to verse 20. For 18, For many walk, of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. There were people that claimed to be followers of the Bible in Paul's day that weren't ministers of the gospel. They were enemies, and they claimed to be Christians. What do these people do? Verse 19, Whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. These people were only in the flesh minding the things of the earth, the worldly things. They didn't care about the things of God. Verse 20, For our conversation is in heaven, from whence we also look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Set your affection on things above, not on things of the earth. We're supposed to exalt and glory in Christ and not in ourselves. I honestly don't know what else to say. I've done my utmost best today to try to show you what the Bible says makes you a good example of a Christian. Are you a good example? What's your conversation like? Do you have charity? Are you walking in the Spirit or are you in the flesh? Are you pure? People say, oh, I'm a pure Christian. I live in purity. And yet, they're only looking at the outward things they don't do. And they're not looking at the things they do do. They're not looking at their heart. And they're not keeping their mouth. And because of that, out of their mouth proceeds corrupt communications. And they attack other Christians and try to tear them down. It shows they don't have any grace. It shows they don't care for others. It shows they're not a good example. My desire is to be a good example of Christ. And I pray that you would be as well. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next week.